Goody two peas. Our topic today is problem solving, and our goal, I can use equations to solve problems. So section 5.4, solve problems involving linear systems. Our first example that we're going to work together uh, says, Chris starts up a lawn mowing business for the summer. He charges customers a flat fee of $50 to sign up for his program and another $5 per week. Cole starts up his own company, but decides he's not going to charge any initial fee, just $10 per week, and hope people choose his business over Chris. So, write two linear equations. Well, we've got Chris's company, and we've got Cole's company. Chris's company, he's going to charge a flat fee of $50, but then $5 for every week that um, they're part of his program. Cole decides he's not going to charge an initial fee. He's only going to charge $10 for every week. And of course, we don't know how many weeks are going to be in the program. That's why we're multiplying by this variable. If they're in the program for one week, it's $10. If they're in the program for two weeks, it'll be $20. If they're in the program for 15 weeks, it'll be $150. So we leave that W there just so that we can put in whatever uh, amount of weeks they're part of the program for. Now, the second one says solve the system and interpret what your answer means. Well, if I'm going to solve the system, I have to assume that the C and the W are exactly the same. So I'm finding the one value of C and the one value of W that is going to make this equation work. Now, this is set up perfectly for substitution because this tells me that C is 10W. So I'm going to take that 10W and put it up into the C in that equation. Oops. So now I'm going to say sub 2 into equation 1. Now, of course, equation 1 said C equals 50 plus 5W. But I know that C is 10W. So I'm going to stick it in, and now I have to solve. So I need a home of the variable and a home of the constant. Uh, this side already has just variables, so let's that, let that be our variable side. So I need to get the variables off of this side and subtract 5w on both sides. So this side becomes 5w, and this side is 50. Now. I have to divide both sides by W because that 5, or sorry, not by W, by 5, because this 5 is multiplying the W. So to get rid of it, I divide both sides by 5. And that tells me that W equals 10. Now that I know what W is, I'm going to sub that back into equation 2 looks like the simplest equation. So we say sub w into, and so we get cost equals 10 times 10 or $100. Now, since we assumed that this meant cost was the same and weeks were the same when we uh, went over it, this means that after 10 weeks, both places cost $100. So if you're going for 10 weeks, then it doesn't matter which person that you go with. So what this means is after 10 weeks, both businesses would cost $100. Now, I'm going to look at a graph of this equation. I graphed this using some software on the computer. And there's a situation I have. Now, the blue line is obviously Chris's. Because if you look here, there's an initial fee. So this is Chris's company. And the red line is Cole's company because it starts at zero. There's no initial fee. And you remember, we talked about direct and partial variation before. So what this actually tells me is that Cole's line is mostly below Chris's until it gets to here, which is 10 weeks. Down here is the number of weeks. 
after 10 weeks, his line is above Chris's. So that means that Cole is the better company if you have under 10 weeks worth of work. Now, Chris, he's more expensive to start with because you have to pay that $50 right off the bat. But if you're going to go past 10 weeks, Chris's company is the best company to choose because he gets cheaper after 10 weeks. If you're going right for 10 weeks, it doesn't matter which company you pick because you're going to be paying uh, the same in the long run. So that's the interpretation of our answer. Next question. A car rental company charges a daily rate of F dollars and a cost per kilometer of K dollars. In general, the cost of renting a car from this company is C equals FD plus KN, where C is the total cost of renting a car if you are going to drive it for N kilometers over D days. So this tells me, this general form says I've got cost equals F is the... Um, is the daily rate, D is the number of days you're driving, K is the per kilometer rate, and N is the number of kilometers you're driving. So we have two things that we can sub information in here for. We have Alyssa's information and Melissa's information, and we have um, information enough to sub in there. Now it says, if Alyssa paid $361.50 to rent a car for six days and drive 480 kilometers. Okay, so there's three pieces of information in there. We have $361, we've got six days, and we've got 480 kilometers. Now that $361.50 is a cost. That F is what we're trying to find. See, look here, it says find the daily rate F and the per kilometer rate K. So we're going to put, uh, we still need that F in there. And then the D is how many days she um, was there. So that's six. Plus K is the per kilometer rate and N is the number of kilometers. So we have 480 kilometers from right there. Now we have to do the same thing for Melissa. This says Melissa rented the same car for, in this case, it's now two days, 300 kilometers, and $173. So I'm going to stick in 173 will equal F times, well, she had it for two days, and she drove 300 kilometers. So this gives us two equations, and they, they don't look the same as what we've, we've had, but we can um, rearrange them and make them look the same. Um, that could be written as 6F, and that could be written as plus 480K, and it's going to equal 361.50 for equation 1. For equation 2, we have 2F and we're adding 300k and that's going to equal on the other side 173. So there's our equation too. Now if you take a look, if I can multiply this equation, equation 2, if I multiply it by, uh, by 3, then I'll be able to get a 6 in front of this f that's already in front of the other f. So I'm going to multiply both sides of that equation by 3. And the way I write it down, I say 3 times equation 2. So that's going to give me 6F plus 900K. And that's going to equal 173 times 3, which is 519. And that's our equation 3. I'm just going to rewrite equation 1 down. And now that I've written the equation 1 down again, I haven't changed it, so I'm still going to call it 1. Now I'm going to subtract these two. I'm going to take my equation 3 and subtract equation 1. So the Fs will go away when I do that. And 900 minus 480 is 420. So 420K equals 519 
minus 36150. So that is 157.50. Now to figure out what K is, we have to divide both sides by 420. And K equals um, 157.50 divided by 420, which is 0 0.38 approximately. I've rounded that. So the per, per kilometer rate is 38 cents. Now we have to figure out what the daily rate is. And to figure out the daily rate, we're going to sub that 38 cents back up into one of the equations. I like equation 2 better. So we'll say sub k in equation 2. Now equation 2 says 2 times f plus 300 times k, but I know k is 0 0.38, is going to equal 173. So 2f plus 300, uh, I get 112.5, uh, and that equals um, 173. Now to get the F by itself, I'm going to subtract 112.5 from both sides. And I get 2F equals um, 60.5. So F equals 30.25. Now I want, I want to say that I rounded this number up here, but when I plugged it back in here, I actually used the next digit. Um, so this number isn't exactly 300 times 0.38 is 114, but I used the exact number there So um, to, get, to get that. So that's why it's not exactly what it was there. Okay. So it looks like we can write a therefore statement that says, therefore, um, the uh, daily rate is $30.25, and the kilometer rate is 0 0.38 dollars or 38 cents. Yeah, now you can try a few on your own.